Welcome to an example of a hypothesis test of two population means with unknown population standard deviations given data. A professor at a large community college wants to determine whether there is a difference in the means of final exam scores between students who took his stats course online and the students who took it in person. He believes that the mean of the final exam scores for the online class is lower than the in-person class. Is the professor correct? The randomly selected 30 final exam scores from each group are listed in the tables below. On the left we have the online class final exam scores. On the right we have the in-person final exam scores. So again, is the mean of the final exam scores of the online class lower than the mean of the final exam scores of the in-person class? Test at a 5% significance level. So if we let mu sub 1 equal the mean of the final exam scores for the online class, and mu sub 2 equal the mean for the final exam scores for the in-person class, we want to test whether mu sub 1 is less than mu sub 2, which is the alternative hypothesis. And if mu sub 1 is not less than mu sub 2, we assume the means are equal, which gives us mu sub 1 equals mu sub 2 for the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis may also be stated as mu sub 1 is greater than or equal to mu sub 2. And because the level of significance is 5%, alpha is equal to 0 0.05, and we have a left-tailed test because we're testing to see whether mu sub 1 is less than mu sub 2. Because we have unknown population standard deviations, we'll perform a two-sample t-test on the t84. So the test statistic is a t-score, and then we'll also find the p-value. So going to the calculator, I've already entered the data to save time. To enter data, press stat, enter. Again, I have the online final exam scores in L1, and I have the in-person or face-to-face -face class final exam scores in L2. Next we press stat, right arrow to tests, and we select option four, two sample t-test. I've already entered the key information, but let's review it. The input is data, down. List one is L1, down. List two is L2, down. We are not using a frequency table, and therefore we enter one for frequency one, and one for frequency two. We're testing whether mu sub one is less than mu sub two. We select less than mu sub two here in the middle. For pooled, we select no, arrow down to calculate, and press enter. We have a t-score of approximately negative 3.2286, and a p-value of approximately 0.0011. Let's go ahead and record these values. Before we compare the p-value in alpha, Let's take a closer look at the t-score of negative 3.2286. If we were doing this test by hand, we would take the alpha of 0.05 and knowing we have a left tail test and find the corresponding z-score, which I've already done here on the left. Notice how the z-score is negative 1.645. Next we would calculate the t-score using the formula shown here. Notice how this requires us to find the sample means and the sample standard deviations. We also assume mu sub one and minus mu sub two is equal to zero. So to find the sample means and sample standard deviations, again, we can use the T84 by determining the one var statistics. To do this, press stat, right arrow to calculate, select one var stats. First select L1, which I've already done. Go down to calculate, enter. X bar is the sample mean, SX is the sample standard deviation. We repeat the process for L2. Stat, calc, option one. Now we select list two by pressing second two. Go down to calculate, press enter. And again, we have the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Performing the calculations, notice we get a T-score that's slightly different than the t-score from the two sample t-test because I am using rendered values for the sample standard deviations. Either way, notice how the t-score of negative 3.2288 is in the rejection region and therefore we are going to reject the null hypothesis. But let's also draw the same conclusion by comparing the p-value and alpha. Actually, before we compare the p-value and alpha, let's take a look at this graph here showing the p-value of 0.0011. If the sample means are equal, then the difference is zero, which is why we have zero at the center of this distribution. And then the difference of the sample means is negative 9.98, which 
which is shown here on the left of zero on the horizontal axis. So the p-value is equal to the shaded area here, which is also equal to the probability that the difference of the means is less than or equal to negative 9.98. And now comparing the p-value and alpha, notice how the p-value is small or lower than alpha, and if the p-value is low, the null must go, or more formally, because the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, or because alpha is greater than or equal to the p-value, we reject the null hypothesis. Which in conclusion means the professor is correct. The evidence shows that the mean of the final exam scores for the online class is lower than that of the in-person class. At a 5% level of significance from the sample data, there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the mean of the final exam scores for the online class is less than the mean of the final exam scores of the in-person class. I hope you found this helpful.